So why is this day important and what is it that we can actually do to make a difference? Lisa Barkley is a senior lecturer in systems thinking and future studies at the University of Stellenbosch Business School. She joins us to answer these questions. Lisa, very good morning to you. What is it that we can do in our own little way? Good morning. There is a movement going on in, where people are intentional about their waste, and that's called the zero waste movement. So what you could do is think about the five R's. The first thing is refuse. Um, if somebody wants to hand you a pamphlet at the crossing, or um, if you want just anything that people just want to give you out, or um, even free stuff, just say no because you don't really need it. And then reduce. Don't go to the shops and do some um, recreational shopping for new clothes, especially if those clothes have got microplastics in it, it ends up in the ocean. And reuse. If you have a jar of peanut butter, reuse that glass jar to go to the shop and use the bins to put the um, lentils or whatever you buy in the bins in that jar and then recycle. Um, recycle is not the golden answer, but it is better than not. Um, for example, of all the plastic that's ever been produced in the world, only 9% of that has been recycled since 1950. Mm. And then rot. Um, the rot is uh, whatever you produce, banana peels, your coffee grounds, put that in a bin in your kitchen and then take that to um, some composting place. Use it in your garden, take it to an urban garden, they will be able to find use for it. I was quite surprised how much carbon gases coffee can emit, the stuff that we just throw away in the landfill. Yes, and it's not only carbon dioxide, it's also methane, which is 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So the moment you send something like coffee grounds or banana peels or something to the landfill, it gets comp um, compacted, it festers there, it gets mixed with other materials, and then it releases methane. Um, in com contrast, when you put it in your garden, and you, it becomes part of your garden. I mean, it's a pity that we don't get to hear about this almost on a daily basis, because I don't think people really know, do you? I mean, I mean, you, you just take your coffee, you take your plastic bags. I think people are aware of plastic bags now, but we don't get the big picture. Why is education on that so scarce? I think it's intentional in the way that people don't want to know about it because it makes them feel guilty. It's the same about veganism. The moment you, um, or cli um, carbon, uh, climate change, any of these things, you tell that to people, they just go, no, 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 la, 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 I don't want to hear about it. Um, because it makes you feel bad as a person because you realize you're the culprit and you can actually do something to change the envi environment for the better. So that's one thing. But there are quite a number of books. There's, um, if you just look for zero waste or zero waste, movement, circular design, circular economy, a lot will come out. South Africa is quite a leader that we have a number of zero waste stores where you go in, you hand in your job. Even during the pandemic, they were making sure that all the um, shared resources were cleaned the whole time. Um, and then, of course, uh, there's quite a number of influencers, as they call themselves, or as the media call them, mm -hmm. that you can follow on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram that shows you on a daily basis. So some of them are hardcore. So basically, they only generate a, a jar of waste the entire year. Oh, wow. Um, but oh, that's quite we can... And Lisa, sorry, let me jump in here. I mean, I was quite shocked to read mm -hmm. that the earth hasn't benefited in any way from the global lockdown. We haven't seen any improvement. And, you know, all of this obviously exacerbates the climate change that we are in the midst of. If we don't deal with this now, us humans on the planet, what's going to happen? Then we will breach the nine planetary boundaries. Um, that is basically what various um, aspects that keep the Earth intact. And the moment we start breaching them, now two has already been breached dangerously, um, but if the rest of them is in our hands, we must be more responsible. And can we um, pull the Earth back? There's a lot of uh, models that's being run that say, as humans, we are will be able to. And um, But we must live intentionally every day. Every decision we make, we must realize there's no way, there's no throwaway. Everything is in the circle. We're in the Earth. Um, that's one of the things we like saying, think outside of the box. But we actually do. We have one. And we have to start thinking within the circle, which is the nine planetary boundaries, which is circular design, circular economy, and the zero waste movement, and keep it in there. And then we might be able to make a difference. Okay. We're listening. Lisa Barkley, thank you very much.